keep them in your heart that so that you might not sin against him. Tell the Lord I want more of thy word. Speak to me even today of thy word. So that I will keep them in my heart in order for me not to sin against thee. In order for me not to sin against thee. Lord, speak to me. My heart is open, ready to receive and to keep them. In order not to sin against thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Father Lord, I pray, Lord God, as we've sang that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I pray as we listen to thy word every time, Lord, we pray that we'll be keeping them in our heart, that Lord, everyone will be able to stay away from sin in Jesus' name. Amen. Even at this time, oh Lord, I pray that you speak to everyone the way that everyone will understand and be able to stay away from sin in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. Uh, we are still in our Bible study and in the book of James. We know we have been in the book of James uh, for some time now. And we are in our first study in the book of James. And we are just in chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. James chapter 1, verses 16 to 18. And the title of the study of today is Do Not Err. The title of the study today is Do Not Err. James chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. It said, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Praise the Lord. Here we see, uh, it's just a follow-up of our last study. In our last Bible study, uh, we spoke about the causes of temptation. The causes of temptation, the steadfastness in trials and overcomers reward. And having been informed by the Lord, in all this, the Lord expects you and I uh, not to err or go into error. Not to do what? Err or go into error. Uh, because we have known what the causes of temptations are. We've known the steadfastness that the Lord expects of every child of God in the midst of temptation. And we have known the reward that awaits everyone that overcome temptation. And the Lord expects us to be steadfast and to overcome in order for us to get the reward that awaits all that overcome temptation. And the Lord will help you and help every one of us to always overcome in Jesus' name. And... Uh, from uh, what we've just read in verse 16 of chapter 1 of James, he said, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Why is it necessary for God to admonish us not to err? And has he ever admonished his people before uh, this admonition not to err? If so, does he care if unbelievers should go into errors? To answer all these questions properly, we are going to treat uh, this study in three subdivisions. In how many? Three subdivisions. The first subdivision will be do not err in the scriptures. Do not err in the scripture. That is, do not err are in the scripture, not just here. Not just in this verse. God has been admonishing his people. Not to err. Uh, the first question, which actually uh, we see in our introduction, is also the subdivision, part of the subdivision of uh, point one, which is do not err. Uh, then he now say, why is it necessary for God to admonish us not to err? Why is it? 
necessary for God to admonish us not to err. The truth is, many people or many so-called believers have erred in the Bible days, and even our present days, many are erring. Many are doing what? Erring. And that is why it is so important for God to admonish us not to err. In answering this question of the Sadducees to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ uh, answered them and told them, Ye do err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. He said they do err because they don't know the scripture nor the power of God. Because the scripture is the standard that the Lord has given unto us. It's what? The standard. So if we want to know if we are erring or not, we need to compare what we are doing and saying and how we are living with the scripture. Anything that is contrary to the scripture, that is antagonizing the scripture, is error. So, Jesus said, ye do err. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. He said, ye do err. Because ye know not the scripture, nor the power of God. And that is the problem of many also today. They do err because they know not the scripture, nor the power of God. God. So they try to rationalize things that and say God can still allow it in this way. The way God said it cannot be possible because they don't know the power of God. And others because they don't know the scripture. And they don't know what God wants of us. So because they don't know what God wants of us, they do help. He said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. Because the word of God is our standard, like I said before. Any contrary uh, thing to the word of God is error. For there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a boy, unto a girl. But the end thereof is death. The way of death. In Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12, that is what the Bible says. And the Lord wants us to know that. Because many feel what they are doing is right. Without comparing it to the word of God. They feel the way they are going is right. Without comparing it to the word of God. But they are erring. Because they never compare it to the word of God. And the word of God is our standard. And in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. The Lord says here. Jeremiah 10, 23. He says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. The way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. You know, when one doesn't really understand the word of God, it will be an error. At times one thinks that he himself is the one that is directing his path, not knowing the path he's taking is being directed by the devil. And is following that path without knowing and think he or she is doing the right thing. That's why Jeremiah said, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. That's why he now said in verse 24, maybe I'm in the wrong path, he said, O oh Lord, correct me, but with judgment. Not in thy anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. So, you see, one need to know that the word of God is the standard. And he need to know that if God don't want us to err. He said, do not err. Do not err. The Lord wants us to be in the right path that leads to heaven. The following passages... <clears throat> 
are talking about not changing or adding to the word of God because changing or adding to the word of God is erring. Do we understand? Changing or adding to the word of God is erring. We don't need to change things. It's for example, uh, we know the, uh, those uh, that are into physics know the law of uh, as, uh, of uh, gravity and they don't change the law. They only follow it and follow the formula and things like that. And so also, uh, we know in the traffic, we have the laws of the traffic laws. If one don't follow the traffic rule, he has error. He cannot change it. The traffic rule is there to follow. And he can get a ticket for not following the traffic rule. So, the Bible, the Word of God, is the standard for our living. Anything contradicting it is an error. So, that is why we want to see all these passages that talk about not adding and not changing the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. It says here, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandment of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. The commandment of God which God commands us, God said, you shall not diminish aught from it. God just wants us to do what? Keep it. He said, don't hard, don't diminish. Don't say, this one is for the olden days. Let's remove this one. It doesn't fit into the modern day. That is error. That's what? Yeah. Error. Or we say, oh, God should have had this. This is for the modern time. Let's add it to it. No. You have to accept it as it is. No modification. That's why there is no first standard, second standard in the word of God. The word of God is the same. We don't add to it. We don't remove from it. If not, it becomes error. It becomes error. And the Lord said, do not err. He said what? Do not err. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6, God still repeated this same thing and said it in one part, in a way. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6. He said, the Lord says here, Add thou not, I read 5 and 6 better. Every word of God is pure. Is pure. Don't adulterate it. Is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Had thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Say, don't add to the word of God. He become an error, and you'll be found a liar. It's like someone that did not follow the plan of the building that uh, was given to him to build. And instead of using the right material, he used substandard materials. After some time, that building will collapse because there is error in the structure and in the material that was used. If we don't pattern our life to the Word of God, our life will be in disarray and in error. And at the end, our intended destination will not be our destination. That is why the Lord is saying, do not err. Do not err. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. Revelation 21, 27. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. The Bible says here, 
And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. He said, if one want to enter into heaven, he must, uh, what will he do? He must not be defiled. That is, he will not do anything God said we shouldn't do. Because when he does whatsoever God asks us not to do, he becomes defiled. He said, neither whatsoever worketh abomination. You see, many people and even those that say they are uh, uh, ministering, that is, uh, those that say they are ministering, and those that say they are even ministers, why many do err. See what God says here. He said, Whatsoever worketh what? Abomination. And in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, God says, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, God says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for the, all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. And God said in Revelation, we read, Neither anything that worketh abomination, they won't enter there. And many ministers today, women putting on that that pertain to man, and they say they are ministering. They do err. And make the young ones also to err, to follow them, to put on what pertain to men. That is, a woman putting on pants. That is, that's what it's called in America. But in an African uh, Europe, it say trousers. And it's ministering. It says walking under the anointing, in disobedience. And at the end, he expects to enter into that destination, heaven. He has error. How will she be able to enter? And some men that live in Scotland also, when it is the time for their festival there, and that all men must wear skirts as their festival demand, their tradition demand, they say it doesn't matter, it's just their tradition. They went and put on skirts too. And they expect to do what? To enter into that destination. He said, do not err. Do not what? Err. So the Lord is saying, we must not err. Back to Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. He said, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only they which are written in the Lamb's book of life that we enter. Anybody that worketh abomination will not enter. Anybody that, that uh, maketh a lie will enter. You see, he did not only say anybody that telleth a lie but make it. One can make believe. He didn't tell the lie with his tongue, with his mouth. But he acts the lie out. You understand? He acted it out. Maybe it's just um, uh, for example, let's say uh, it's not working in the play. We know some people that deceive people to uh, play 419. I don't know how they get into those offices and act as the manager of that company. And the person that they want to see, deceive will come, they will uh, talk to the person, act as if they gave him contract and something like that, and the person will pay so so million for the contract. And later, they pocket the money they left. When the person now come to come and collect the contract paper, he say, where is the manager? He say, the manager is before you. He say, no, 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 there was a manager here. Yeah. Then the person says, ah, this is the manager. This is the picture we spoke on internet before, and then we even spoke together here. He said, mister, you are wrong. 
He acted it out. He lied and deceived the person and he vanished into thin air. And the person, money is gone. For invisible contracts. So, but the Lord is saying, do not err. Do not err. The Lord wants us not to err. And uh, we see also in the book of uh, Revelation 22, 15, 22, 15, it says here, For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and warmongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You see, the Lord always use what? Maketh a lie. It's not only telling the lie, acting it out also is lying. Are we getting it? So the Lord is telling us that we shouldn't make it a lie. Make a lie. And he said, all this, he said, without, they are without, they will not enter into that destination, heaven. He said, the dogs. He's not talking about the physical dogs, those that behave like dogs. How do dogs behave? We see that dogs, they do the life of boyfriend and girlfriend. Immorality. Immorality is what? That of dog. So those that are involved in immorality, they are like what? Dog. And they cannot enter into that destination called heaven. God said, do not err. God said what? Do not err. He want us not to err. To know that all such, no matter what they call themselves, whether minister or so, if they are involved in all these things, cannot make heaven. And said, and sorcerers, those that use evil power to do one thing or the other. If a life let him or she be ministering and is using evil power, he will not enter into that destination. And anybody that consults all those sorcerers will not enter into that destination. They are those that are participating in Wicca. That's a religion of witchcraft that they have here in the United States of America. And majority of the people there are white. Young white men. And very few white women. They call them Wicca. But the Lord said, anybody that participates in such thing will not be able to enter into that destination. And womongers, they're talking about the morals and the murderers. Killing physically, killing emotionally, because there are different ways to kill. One can kill the emotion of another person. One can kill the person physically. And one can kill the person in different ways. But the Lord is saying, do, he said, they will not enter. They will be outside. Murderers and idolaters. Instead of worshipping God alone, some worship men. Some worship men. And that is why we see today, some instead of praising God, they praise their founder. Instead of following the word of God, I say, uh, we should pray in the name of who? Jesus, they will pray, they will say, God of, they will now mention their founder. They have already made the person what? An idol. They've already made the person what? An idol. Almost like the people of the world. You see, the people of the world, when a singer that is their idol is singing, some of them will be fainting, some of them will be crying, and because that singer is their idol. And here in America, they will say, American idol. And that's what we are seeing now also in Christendom. They now make uh, the person the idol of that religion. But the Lord is saying, do not err. He saying, do not err. He said also, and whatsoever, which we have just read before, that make it a lie. So God is saying, we should know that he doesn't want us to err. He wants us to remain uh, in the path of righteousness that leads to heaven. In Matthew chapter 15 verse 9, 
Matthew chapter 15 verse 9. Matthew chapter 15 verse 9. But Jesus said, but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Instead of teaching the word of God, some are teaching their tradition. They are teaching what? Their tradition. Then they will now say, ah, anybody in their tradition, that's the one that we, in their tribe, that's the one that will make heaven. Then they will see other people that are not of their tribe, this one cannot make heaven. That tribe, hmm, they can never be Christian. <laughs> we get in it. So, you see, God is saying, no. And we see in some uh, churches, which I was trying to correct uh, some people last week or so, they will say they want to do something in their church. Everybody should show uh, a dress code and wear the, uh, buy the material and the dress and wear the dress of uh, their tradition, of where they came from. They will bought, buy, sell, even sell it. Everybody in the church will buy it and so God I say. Is, that, is the church for that tradition or is it the church of God? Praise the Lord. So we see, God said, do not err. Do not what? Err. This is what happened here. And Jesus is saying, but in vain, they do worship me. Teaching for, for doctrines, the commandment of men. Commandment of men. Every tradition has their own commandment. We understand. This is how they behave in this tradition. This is what they count as respect in this tradition. This is what they count in respect in the other tradition. And what they count in respect in each tradition is different. We know that. But all, everyone believes that his own is what? The best. But God said, it's not tradition. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to teach what? The word of God. That's why I said, in vain do they worship him. You know, in the beginning, in the introduction, I said many we think that they are in the pathway that leads to heaven. Not knowing they are in what? Error. This one, they thought they were in the right path. And if you read it in verse uh, uh, 1 of uh, Matthew chapter 15, they were even angry with what the disciples of Jesus were doing because they didn't follow their tradition. I'll read it there. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that causeth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift. But whatsoever thou, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honoreth not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thou have, uh, thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Tradition. For example, the word of God, God said, there is no difference in Christ. If we understand. That all I want. But now they segregate, they lift up their tradition and make all that looks as if no, God said no. Are we getting it? It's the word of God. Because by so doing, they make the people believe in tradition and not the word of God. And when one uh, violates that tradition, they say the person has seen, whereas the person did not see before God. Are we getting the point? So the Lord is saying, do not err. Do not err. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. 
<clears throat> Revelation 22, verse 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall had unto these things, God shall had unto him the plagues that are written in the book in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Praise the Lord. So God said, no hiding, no subtracting. Because hiding or subtracting is error. And God said we should not participate in that. So we see, the Sadducees err because of ignorance. They err because of what? Ignorance. They didn't know the scripture, nor the power of God. But some others err willfully. Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. Verse 15 to 19. Let's see these men and their wives who err willfully. Not that they don't know what the word of God says, but willingly they err. And there are many people also willingly today. They know what the word of God says, but willingly they do go into error. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15 to 19. Then, all the men which knew that their wives had borne incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwell in the land of Egypt, in Patros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto you. He said, We know it's the word of God, but we will not do what? Hearken unto you. 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offering unto her as we have done we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals. And we are well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offering unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven, and pour out drink offering unto her, did we make a cake? To worship, to worship her, and pour out drink offering unto her without our men. He said, We did it together with our husband, and we will continue. God is the one that was blessing them. The thought is because they were giving to those idols. Until God said, Okay, God sees from giving to them. They say, Oh, because we cease from burning to those idols. That's why the blessing stopped. No, no, God want them to repent. But they said they will continue. So that's what we see. God said we should not err. So do not err in the scripture. Include all this we are going to see. One, let no man deceive you. People can deceive you into error. God said what? Let no man deceive you. Let's just look at a few uh, passages of the Bible concerning that. Matthew chapter 24 verse 4. Matthew 24, verse 4. God says, Let no man deceive you. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take it that no man deceive you. Be careful that no man do what? Deceive you. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5. We are going to read some uh, verses in this Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 the Bible says here let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things 
Comment the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Be not what? Partakers with them. You see what the Lord is saying? He said, don't be partaker with them. Then look at verse 3 to find out. But fornicators, fornications, and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint, neither have filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no warmonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, uh, who is an idolater, at any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. That's why I said, let no man deceive you. They are committing all those things. They say, ah, no problem. That they are going to heaven. That their spirit didn't sin. It is their mouth that sin. It is their body that sin. And do we know there is one religion now? They uh, uh, bring pipe and be smoking it. Their prophet and others will be sharing it with one another and rejoicing, saying they are praising the Lord. So, we see, see, let no man deceive you. And people are being deceived. God said, let no man do what? Deceive you. Be careful that no man deceive you. And let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. It says here, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Let no man deceive you. Verse 8 now says, He that committed sin is of the devil. Don't let him say it's of God. It's of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He said, let no man deceive you. Say, I'm of God, I'm of God, only I'm not righteous. No. You will understand. He said, let no man deceive you. Don't let any man deceive you. First Thessal uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. <clears throat> it says here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that for that day shall not come. And said, There come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we see the Lord is saying, let no man deceive you. These are part of the do not err in the scripture. And also, be not deceived. It's also part of it. The first one says, let no man deceive you. This one says, be not deceived. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. First Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. It says here, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Ah, I can see many pastors living an unrighteous life. Then it means one can be unrighteous and get into heaven. No. He said, be not deceived. Don't imitate them. Follow Jesus. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Ah, but I see many pastors that are fornicating. And they, I think uh, if they are uh, pastor and fornicating, then uh, one can fornicate and get to heaven. No. He said, be not what? Deceived. No, idolaters. Uh -uh, I can see some pastors that make themselves an idol and I think they will make evil. No, 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 no. Be not deceived. No, idolaters. I 
can see those are committing adultery and they say they are ministers and uh, believers. And I, uh, if those who are doing it, I think uh, one can do it and get to heaven. No, be not deceived, nor effeminate. A man that is dressing and behaving and walking and talking and uh, doing his hair like woman, effeminate. God said, we not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Even though if some nations are now saying it's right, be not deceived. We understand. The Lord said what? Be not deceived. And so the same thing with manly. Woman that cuts her hair like man and a uh, dress like man and uh, uh, put everything on like man and try to imitate as if she is a man. Be not deceived. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. The other ones were just effeminate and manly. They were just behaving like the opposite sex. But now the abuser of themselves with mankind, this one now went into gay marriage. You understand? They were even now committing sin with uh, man and man, woman and woman. You understand? God said, be not deceived. All those are going to hell. They are not going to get to that destination called heaven. No! Even though we see some that say they are pastors and they are gay, they are not going to make heaven. So be not deceived. Don't let the name pastor deceive you. Be not what? Deceived. And those that say they are believers and they are involved in that, be not deceived. Don't let the name believer deceive you. Everybody can imitate a, a true believer and a true man of God. You understand? Praise the Lord. In the book of First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, verse thirty-three. First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, verse thirty-three. It says here, "Be not deceived; evil communication corrupt good manner. Evil communication. That is when you are moving with people that are not uh, believers, that are having bad characters, that are involved in all those kind of life." Be not deceived. They will corrupt you. That's what the Lord is saying. Are we getting it? He said evil communication corrupt good manners. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter. I'm just... Uh, they, they can't uh, corrupt me. Be not deceived. Because little drops of water make a mighty notion. When they will be dropping their corrupt manner into your ears, gradually, 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 it becomes a mighty ocean in your life. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. That's why God said that, uh, that be not uh, be unequally yoked together with unbeliever. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not what? Mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Be not deceived. That take us to the second point. From whom comes good gift? That is, where does good gift come from? In James chapter 1, verse 17. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Say every good gift come from God. But just like the men and women in Jeremiah 44, verse 15 to 19, they thought the good gift they were receiving came from what? Their idol. They were worshipping. And many things that the blessing they are receiving is coming from one idol or a person. But let me tell you, God may use a person to uh, bless you, it is not that person. It is who? It is God. It is not that person. So you don't turn and be worshipping the person. 
It is God. Be not deceived because that person will just become your idol. Because some have some uncle as an idol, some aunt as an idol, and because they say, ah, if not for this uncle, I will not be alive. No, it's if not for God. God only used him or her as an instrument. God said, be not deceived. So, from where does <coughs> blessing come from? Blessing doesn't come from man or from the, uh, your idol or from the devil. It is from God. Every good gift is from God. If devil give you something, it's not a gift. It's a hook. It's a bait to finish the person. Just like a fisherman, they put bait to catch fish. The fish will say, these people don't like me. They've given me blessing. But the moment he tried to eat the blessing, is going to land on the frying pan. And it's going to be fried. And it will stretch and die off. You understand? So, every good gift is from God. The devil does not give any good gift. And it is not the instrument God used to give to you that gave it to you. It is God. That is why John the Baptist did not agree with the uh, what those men are saying, thinking it is their idol and things like that. Look at it from in John chapter 3 verse 27. John chapter 3 verse 27. John the Baptist says here, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. That is what the Lord is showing us. It is only God that gives that good gift, which means both spiritual and physical gifts come from God. Both spiritual and physical gifts come from God. Let's see some passages on spiritual gifts coming from God. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. It says here, And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. The heart to serve the Lord is a gift. And that gift, the devil will not give to anybody. It's only from God. A man will not give it also to you. Do you know, human beings in general also like to follow the uh, pattern of the devil. They want to be worshipped. They want to be what? Worship. Worship. But the Lord is saying, is the one that gives the heart. Human beings are not like the angel that John wanted to worship. That said, no, 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 don't worship me. Worship God. In the book of uh, Revelation chapter 22, Revelation 22, 22, Revelation 22, verse 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things and had them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am a thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophet, and of them which keep the saying of this book. Worship who? Worship God. But we see people that take the glory of God, that they are being what? Worship. They took them as idol. Instead of praising God, they praised them. Instead of praising who? Praising God, they praise God. They praise them. And they now are happy. But God says, no, gift doesn't come from them. It's from God. It's from God. Uh, and physical gift and spiritual gift come from him. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Matthew 11 28, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's the one that can give us that 
gift of rest. If no man will be like a trouble sea. He's troubled every time. But God said he's the one that gives rest. No man can give you rest. He's God. Man may try to provide physical things for you. Those physical things will not give you rest. Rest comes from within. And it is God. He said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you what? Rest. The rest and the peace that passeth all understanding. That whether things are happening around, you are at peace. You are not troubled. And people will say, how can somebody be so relaxed in this situation? It is because he has the gift of rest from God. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is telling us that spiritual gift and uh, physical gift come from him. In Luke chapter 11 verse 13, Luke 11 13, he says here, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that adds in? It comes from him. Good gift come from God. Now let's uh, see also physical gift. Because we have just seen what? Spiritual gifts coming from God. Let's see some passages on physical gifts. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25. Exodus 23 verse 25. Exodus 23 verse 25. Exodus 23 verse 25. It says here, And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. Amen. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. It's a blessing from God. He said, how will you receive that blessing? And ye shall serve the Lord thy God. He says, when you are serving him, as a recompense of serving him, he will do what? He shall bless thy bread and thy water and he said i will take sickness away from the midst of thee this is the blessing from god think of it when daniel meshach and abednego uh we are in uh, babylon they gave them a scholarship to study in their university and part of the scholarship they will eat the king's meat but Daniel and his friends found out that these meats were offered to idol. They said, no, we are not going to eat this. They said, please, instead of this meat, give us legumes. Beans and uh, uh, potato, things like that. And examine us after 10 days. If we are not better than this, uh, that eating the king's meat, then force us to eat that meat. You understand? Because they know God will bless their bread and their water. And after 10 days, they saw that Daniel and his friends were better off. So they didn't force them to eat the king's meat. So you see, God will bless your bread and water. And he will do so in Jesus' name. But serve the Lord. But do what? Serve the Lord. Psalm 81, verse 13 to 16. Psalm 81, verses 13 to 16. Psalm 81, verses 13 to 16. The Bible says here, Oh, that my people are hacking unto me. This is God speaking. He said, Oh, that my people are hacking unto me. And Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. You see what God is saying? God said at times, those that say they are children of God, they don't understand. Instead of following the way of the Lord and obeying the word of God, they want to feel they know better than God. And by their doing, they follow another means. They say God should have said this. And they now added that. God, God shouldn't have said this. They removed that. 
Then, instead of being defended by God, they are not defended. They say the enemy has power. The enemy doesn't have power. It's because they err. It's because they did what? They err. If they have followed the word of God, as God want them to follow it, God said, Oh, that my people are acting unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I soon, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversary. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Are we getting it? He said, But their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat. Not any kind of wheat, the finest of the wheat. And with honey, out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. So when one do err, he's injuring himself from blessing. God says, serve him, and he will shower his blessing. Praise the Lord. So that is what the Lord is saying, and the Lord wants us to know and follow this uh, pattern he has shown unto us and will be blessed beyond our expectation in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20 to 23. Isaiah 30 verse 20 to 23. It says here, And thou, O Lord, and thou, the Lord give you the bread of adversary and the waters of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thy eyes shall see thy teachers. He said, Thy eyes shall see thy teachers. If God wants to punish our people, He removed the true pressure of God from them. The true pressure of the word of God. So that they will not hear the truth. And when they don't hear the truth, they will go into error. The blessings they're supposed to receive, they won't receive it. But God said, he, he, he said, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy tisha be removed into a corner anymore. Are we getting it? He said, but thy eyes shall see thy tishas. And when your eyes see thy tisha, what will happen? And thy ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver, and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a monstrous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get the ends. Because you have now seen your t-shirt. You now say, this is the way. Walk in the way. The idols are not the way. Then you now cast out the idol. And you will see what the Lord is saying? So, yes. one will now cast out the idol. And as he cast out the idol, the blessings of the yes. Lord will be shower. He said, then, in verse 23, Then shall he give the rain of thy seed, and that thou shalt sow the ground with all, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous in that day. Shall, in that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is saying, make sure you walk in the path of righteousness. Do not err. Now, this uh, before we go to the last point, uh, we read Mal Malachi chapter 10, uh, chapter 3, I mean to say verse 10. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. And also Matthew 6.33. Malachi is before Matthew. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. He said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there, be, there may be meat in my house. And prove me now wherewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the window of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be there shall not be room enough to receive it. God said, part of way of receiving the blessing is bringing the tithe into the storehouse. The storehouse is the house of God. 
the place of worship. He said, the tithe, and what is the tithe? It's the one-tenth of the blessing God gives to us of our increase. At times, it may be salary. At times, it may be gain we make in business or depending on what one is doing. We understand. So God said, it's the one-tenth. It's not all. It's what? The one-tenth. And as one give it, God gives more. It's like, uh, I use a shed as an example. The shed had a bread or cookie, biscuit, as we say in uh, Africa. Then he was eating it, it fell from his hand. It has tossed dead. He picked it up, he wanted to eat. No. The mother said, no, 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 no. Give that to me. But the shed, because the shed doesn't know, he's reasoning in a different way. He said, no. Then he's hiding it. The mother wants to collect the dirty one and give him a better one, an even bigger one. You understand? But when the child refused, the child will not get another one. Yes. And he go with the dirty one. But when the child, just in act of obedience and faith, believing that my mother knows the best for me, and he just give it to the mother, the mother will now give the child a better one. And that's the same thing with believers. When God will say, Bring in your tithe. He just do like the little kid. He said, no, I think I'm not sensible. <laughs> you understand? And he held on to the tithe. And God said, okay, I hold on to the one, the bigger one I wanted to give you. He said, what is happening? You are the one that refused to bring the smaller one to get a bigger one. Are we getting it? So, is the token of appreciation of what God has done, then God gives more. So God said, bring in your tithe. And when we do that, we will be blessed beyond our expectation in Jesus' name. And Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. He did not say, Seek ye first all other things. Then the kingdom of God will be added. No, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all that things will be added unto you. We go to the last point, which we uh, uh, just say in brief: born by His word. Born by His word. James chapter one verse eighteen. James chapter one verse eighteen. It says here, "Of His own will begat He us with the word of truth." that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creation. All our purposes, uh, I mean, all our purpose of serving God is to enter into his kingdom or to get to heaven. But Jesus said there is one important criteria to entering the kingdom of God. You must be born again. That's in John chapter 3, verse 3. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot even see it, uh, not to talk of entering. Now, by what means is it for a man to be born again? Is it to go back into his mother's womb and be born? No. It is by water and the Spirit. As the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. John chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Jesus said, yeah, He said, Jesus said, Very, very, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot, she cannot enter into the kingdom of God. But what does it mean by the water? Is he talking about water baptism? No. The water here means the word of God. Ephesians chapter six, uh, chapter five, verse twenty-six. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-six. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-six. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-six. He says here <clears throat> that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. The word of God is the water there. 
that is saying he must be born of water. The washing of water by the word. That is why Jesus said, the word I speak unto you as spirit and life. Because the word can make us to be born again. Be born by the word. Born of the word. And that is in the book of uh, John chapter 6, verse 66. John chapter 6, verse 66. 66. <clears throat> John chapter 6. Let's read 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Be born of the word. Be born what? Of the word. And 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Be born of the word. For one to be born of the word, he must hear the word of God. <coughs> and it is the word of God that will make him to know the truth, and the truth shall set him free. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's stand upon our feet. Let's talk to the Lord. That as He has spoken unto you today, He has asked you not to err, and you will not err. The Word of God is the standard for our living. The standard of our life is the Word of God. So you compare everything to the Word of God to know if you are erring or you are still in the right path. Tell the Lord as He has taught you today, you will do. You will not be deceived and you will not let any man deceive you. You will not let anyone deceive you. You will serve the Lord in truth and in spirit. And He will bless your bread and your water. And He will take away sickness from thee. As for his grace, the grace to follow, the grace to continue, the grace to do the right thing and to walk in the path of righteousness, the grace not to copy others but to follow the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.